The United States has approved about one billion U.S. dollar arms sale to Nigeria, and there is a list of uh, equipment and ammunition that that government says it will make available to Nigeria for sale to help in fighting insecurity. Recently, we saw the attack on a train headed Abuja from Kaduna, which uh, several people were being abducted in a few uh, pockets of attacks we've seen in parts of the country. Tonight, let's speak with the chairman of uh, the committee on the army and the Senate, Senator Ali Indume. Thank you so much, Senator, for coming. Thank you very much. Your sir. one will say that we need more equipment to fight. We need more money to prosecute um, the war against insurgency in the Northeast. And in fact, what we've seen in Kaduna, the federal government has said there is some kind of collaboration between uh, the Boko Haram and this bandit. The one billion US dollar arms sale promised by the United States government. How does that come to you? Well, it doesn't come as a surprise, but it's a very um, cheering development, uh, which I thought you didn't know. I wanted to share it uh, with Nigerians. You know, you just don't always report the sad events, but if there are developments, hopeful ones, especially those that uh, will assist in solving our problem, you share it with Nigerians so that it will reduce the anxiety. Not only that, uh, we have been having it very difficult with the United States because of misunderstanding or the wrong perception given to them about Nigeria in terms of human rights war in the prosecution of the war. But as the relationship got closer, they get to understand where the situation we are in. Uh, and I want to also say that it is not only the United States that is willing to help. Uh, Turkey recently, the president was around, and um, I know that um, in this fight against insurgency, we need drones. And the Turkey government, uh, or the, the Turkey as a country, is one of the countries that is advanced in the drone technology. And so uh, we are, the Nigerian government is also procuring some drones from them, and I think very soon, uh, after the training, we have gotten to a level whereby personnel have been trained now as to the deployment of the drone, which is very, very critical in the success against this war. And the Nigerian army is also there trying to uh, uh, increase its recruitment because the manpower challenge that we have, uh, uh, insufficiency of one manpower is also the biggest challenge. I also say that in a country of over 200 million, you can't be talking about uh, Nigerian army strength of less than 200,000. And that of police, I think up to now, it's not up to 400,000. In fact, in summary, the total number of uh, security agencies being paramilitary or whatever in the country is not up to 1 million. That is grossly inadequate. So that area too needs to be jacked up. And um, I think I think we'll get over it soon. Did America in this agreement of uh, arms sale uh, are willing to uh, take uh, a piecemeal payment, or is going to be uh, no, well, once and for all? That that detail does not matter. The most important thing, and the cheering news, is that they have now agreed to not only sell this first batch of attack helicopters and other assorted equipment that are needed, but they believe that the Nigerian government needs those critical equipment in order to restore peace and order in order to address the security challenges that we have in this country. Mm. So after this, this is just the first batch, I believe. When are we expected to see the possible final procurement? When, should, uh, when are we expected to have some of this procurement land on Nigerian soil? Well, we, I cannot say exactly that because, you know, these are not off-the-shelf items. Sometimes... And uh, some of these, pro these uh, they need to, even if they are on ground, they need to be configured for our own environment, um, the climate and all that. And those attack helicopters to those that are supposed to man it need some basic training. Even if you are a pilot, mm. you have to be, you know, you have to go. You understand that the payment, the one billion dollars, also covers training of our own military uh -huh. officials. So that is it. So we are expecting as soon as possible. We don't have to, time to wait. It, I, will, I wish it is, or the Nigerian government will also wish that these items arrive in time, in very good time. Mm. But 
Uh, the president, I know, and the Nigerian army are very anxious. Our security agencies are all, everybody is concerned about the security situation in this country. Nothing can go on or move rightly if the security situation is not properly addressed. And unfortunately, the level of uh, the security challenges we have in this country is also, you know, uh, expanding. We don't hear of that in the Northwest before, and it's now in Northwest, in Niger, and North Central, and uh, in fact, uh, in Kaduna and all that. And then we have the challenges in the Southeast with IPOP and all that. Uh, so the earlier we get over it, the better. Mm. It's interesting because uh, some of the equipment that we're saying, because we're, you are one of those th that said that we need sophisticated equipment, yeah. such that uh, of a large expanse of space, we can be able to monitor remotely. And I'm seeing some of the equipment, uh, if it was night vision imaging system, um, night vision queuing display, these are uh, technology-based equipment that are going to be sold to Nigeria. But in all of these that are going to be sold, the question people will ask, that we were clamoring for equipment and fighter jets, we had to canoe aircraft that we were asking the former government of the United States, the president visited uh, the former president, uh, and they agreed and they sold it to Nigeria. Uh, to Nigeria. But why has it, been not, and has it not been used in the Northwest? <laughs> First of all, we had this challenge from the same source. Uh, the deployment of uh, Tokano in the Northwest had some little challenges because those bandits operating in those areas were only recently declared as terrorists. They had a strict guidelines because of fear of human rights abuses as projected by Nigerians. It's unfortunate that you know this issue that or the, child, the problem we have with the United States was perpetuated by Nigerians themselves. Based on their Lehi law. Based on their the Lehi law. Yeah. And based, or based on their unsubstantiated allegations against the government then. They tried to give the United States impression as if we are fighting a religious war in Nigeria and that Christians are being killed and all that. Until the government got clearly to know that this insurgents or the other forms of criminality is going on in the country has nothing at all to do with the, with the, with the, with the religion. And so that is when now everybody is putting hands on deck to help us get over. Does it not have anything to do with religion? Partly it does have something. No, 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 it doesn't. Because Boko Haram is uh, uh, propagating yeah. uh, a state where they said, they said education is, uh, is a ram, is, uh, is uh, prohibited. I mean, is uh, according to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they believe that uh, in a certain way of life and all of that. Well, let me uh, make it simple for you. Part of their belief isn't it uh, religious related? When I'm, let me make it simple for you. Do, have you ever had a situation where Boko Haram, before they attack a village or kill the people, they try to find out whether they are Muslims or Christians? No. And I can tell you authoritatively, I'm from there. More Muslims were killed. In fact, they killed more Muslims than the Christians. And for, fortunately for us, those areas that are Christian dominated, I can say like in Boro, one or two local government, particularly Chibok, and my own local government, Goza, we have a good number of, and Howell there. <laughs> but if you go and take the statistics of the number of people killed by Boko Haram, they, uh, any life is, uh, you know, every life is important. All right. Before I get into politics, um, does it look like this war on insecurity is gotten out of the government's hands? No. Uh, is the government overwhelmed? No. No. The government is not overwhelmed on it. It's not because I'm part of the government or because... Maybe because I, you're an APC member. That's yeah, because that's it. Do you now say that these people that are causing this problem are PDP? I ask you this. No, no, I don't answer questions on this. Okay, problem. so if questions. you don't answer questions, but then I tell you, look, we have a security problem. You don't politicize it or give it ethnic coloration or anything. What is happening in the South is, who are they killing more? It was like Hausa should leave. But now IPOP is killing, you know, Ibos. And they say you are trying to liberate Ibos. 
But those that are killed there in the in in in, in Southeast are more of Ibos. I'm asking if the government of the day have the answer. It's to not this the issue problem. of overwhelming. We have a challenge or security situation at hand. And this is not new, it can happen anywhere. And it happens in many countries. Like, you know, uh, Somalia is out of hand now. It's, it, it, uh, Sudan is, is, in, is in trouble. And some other countries like Burkina Faso and all that, they have all these kind of uh, security challenges. It has nothing to do with religion. Crimi it's just a form of criminality. And any criminality is just, you know, doing things against the law. What do you so think let it, us not... What do you think is fooling? Wait. What, what is foiling it is what you are trying to do yourself. What to, is it? Yeah, to give it any other form of... No, I'm asking a question. Yeah, I'm asking, I'm asking, I'm asking I'm, I'm, a question. I'm saying that is the government <clears throat> overwhelmed? And you, and, and you said that you're not answering because you're in government. No, I'm not saying and no, I'm, no, no, and no. I, I'm, I'm, not, asking, I'm, I'm saying that, is it also because you're an APC? No. Because it's, <laughs> no. it was your party. No, I'm... So I, there was no coloration let, for my... It was a question I asked. Let me be categorical about it. There is government... And this government is not something like a switch off. If you just change the, uh, uh, the line, for example, ele electric line, if there is low current on this and you switch it to another uh, line, maybe and you think that there's a full current. It's not it's as easy as that. You know that in matter of security. We have a government in place. The, plan, the government is very responsive, especially the president. If you go to him now with anything that you, he thinks or you can convince him that will help in addressing the security challenges we are facing in this country, he will sign off on that. And that I give you an example. Even this procurement of the latest items, it, is, it has not gone through <clears throat> the other processes, due, long process or due process as you call it. But when immediately the American government is willing to assist uh, and to sell those critical platforms to Nigeria, Mr. President signed order of... So order. why if he's so, willing? So wait, what, what exactly is causing... Because as far as Nigerians are concerned, mm. people are dying every day. People the are numbers, dying every... If I show you the figures, it's overwhelming. Oh, no, I know the figures. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is depressing yeah. to see that this number of people have died. Do you know how many people have died? Over 2,000 people have died just in a few months alone in this I country. I know, so I'm more concerned about this than you. Maybe, unfortunate. I'm more concerned about it. Just yesterday, just yesterday, ISWAP attacked a, 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 a Nigerian army post just close to Medugri, not up to 10 kilometers in Mulai. Mulai is just 10 kilometers or thereabout, not up to 10 kilometers. And they killed two security personnel there. And they, they cut it away with, you know, two critical equipment, and when they could not get away with it, when they saw the Air Force, they burnt it down. That is a big loss to Nigeria. They also attacked a village in Chibok yesterday and killed two people in Chibok. So I'm aware of this. And we know of last week, the attacks carried out in Kaduna and the Niger State and all that. So this is not something that we will say, ah, it's, 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 it has overwhelmed the government, no. I don't want to believe in that. We have this problem. The problem is being addressed. And all we need to ask or to do is to ask government to do more. And then, as the chief of army state uh, staff said, just last Thursday, we invited him to the Senate to tell us what's going on. And he said, look, the major problem we have is that Nigerians think that this is the... This is Nigerian army or security agencies problem or the government problem. No, security challenges is everybody's business. And the earlier we agree that it is our problem and we have all collective responsibility mm -hmm. to solve it, the better for all us. All right, let, let's switch to policies quickly. But uh, there's a need just coming in now. We're understanding that there is a bomb explosion. They have killed three people in Taraba State. This affected our cattle market in Taraba State. Needs just coming in. That, uh, uh, three people may have been found dead, 19 people probably injured as a bomb explosion occurred at a cattle market in Taraba State. Stay with us. We'll give you details of that right here on the program. Let's move into politics now. Uh, I just announced on the program two p new entrants into the presidential race. And, and I saw you at uh, the declaration of uh, the Minister of uh, Transportation. Is that a man you're supporting? Yeah, that's my project. What do you mean by your project? I started it. What do you mean by you started it? Yeah, I, I, I was, I, I'm one of those that asked Amici to run. Why do you think you should run? Because I feel that at this critical time, we need a Nigerian to run. 
not uh, somebody that will run based on where he comes from origin and not somebody that uh, is not experiences enough and not somebody that doesn't have the pedigree the energy and the intellect to run and i feel that in this government apc the best candidate we can present is amici why do you think he's the best candidate? You have a long list of people in your party, which, of course, I will be showing you in a moment, of the faces. That, I mean, we have now new and new, two new entrants, a former Senate President, Kenny Namani, yeah. a former governor of an Anambra State and a sitting minister just like Amechi, mm -hmm. uh, minister of labor, um, Chris Ngige. They've just thrown their hat in the ring today, and they did that in their home states. Why do you think that he is better than all of this lot? Well, um, I don't want to use the word that he is better than those that you listed. But you said he's the best. Yeah. The best what doesn't mean that others are not good enough. But when you say he's the best out of... No, you have you good people. Bad, I mean. You have very good people. Then you take the best. He is the best. In comparative analysis, he's better than all of them. Yes. No, no. I don't want you to use that. No, when you say best, I mean, no, you, have, good. They you are have good. a port no, no, no. to don't, pick from. And you say someone is best. Don't I mean, put, it's in comparative analysis, he's better than they, all of don't them. Don't put words into my mouth. You I know just what, said, you are the ones. I'm no, not putting words. I'm, I'm, you said he's best. He's the best yes, out among, of all you have in your party. Among, amongst all the best. Including pres uh, Vice President Oshibajo, yes. including Bola Tinubu, yes. including Governor Umai, yes. including Governor Yaya Bello. Yes. What makes him the best? I told you my reason. One is that amongst them, I feel that Amechi is the Nigerian candidate. We need a Nigerian candidate or president, not somebody that would, be, would seem to be considered as a sectional or regional candidate. Are the others Ghanaians? No, or they, are they are Nigerians. They are Nigerians. Uh, so why do you say you, you need a Nigerian candidate yeah because most of if you classify the rest they are more uh, of regional candidates than national candidate what makes amechi a national candidate because he's a national candidate how he's a nigerian he believes he's coming out to serve as a nigerian not because he's from somewhere mm. um do you think that he stands a chance of getting the party's ticket because that's the first order yeah we're working strongly on that Yesterday, we were in three states. I was, not even four. We went to Lagos, went to Osun, Ekiti, and Ondo. And I can tell you that, well, we're going to make it, inshallah. Because Nigerians now understand, and Nigerians know what they want. Nigerians are no longer, you know, are looking at things parochially. On the, that I, from my interaction with people from all these states, we went to North uh, West, we went to southwest, we're going to southeast, and uh, so far, so good, inshallah. And let me tell you, among these candidates so far, <laughs> Ameji stands out. Not only in that, he is now the only bridge builder between the old and the young. Ameji is 56 getting into this race. And the rest, take a statistics, only uh, um, Yahya Bello. And why I disqualify him is because, as I said, I have been advocate that the president should come from the south. He could have been a candidate of consideration, but he's from the north. And when we, when in 2015, when we APC presented its candidates, it was agreed in principle that the candidates should come from the north. Um, Buhari, Atiku, um, uh, Sam and Dai, Isaiah, Late, and, uh, and uh, Konko, so all of them were from the north. They contested. I have been saying that Koracha only participated. In the, in, the, in the race, because I remember he, he had his uh, ticket for the governor in his pocket before he went to Lagos for that convention. So for me, Yahya Bello is... So if you take Yahya Bello out, the remaining, even those that are recently mentioned, these are guys, to me, is personal, that have crossed the line. For what line is that? To, 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 to me, to my qualification. Because Nigeria now, as I said, is at a critical stage. We need somebody that has the energy. We need to have somebody that has the intellect. We need somebody that has the acceptability. And then, the, not common acceptability, acceptability, but can connect between the massive number of young people mm -hmm. that are looking at, uh, marginalized in, in governance with those that are mature, I mean, are being, have also gone up in governance. That's why, to me, as I said, if I'm to do a screening, I'll screen off anybody that is above 64 or 65.
So is that the reason when you talked about energy? We yeah. saw we saw him. You were at the stadium that day yeah. when we saw Rotima Mechi uh, going round the stadium. And uh, is that the reason why? Well, was that was that intentional? Yeah, somehow to but, show to show that he's uh, young yeah, at heart. Yeah. And uh, okay, I, that, I couldn't I couldn't do that myself. You, so when we agreed, you have crossed the sixty mark. Yes. Yeah, so I told about. him, you run, we walk. <laughs> and that was what we did. <laughs> he ran. But, but one of the candidates said that he's not in a wrestling bout. That he's not no, it doesn't matter. To no, no, no. But you, did, you need the energy. That you don't need. That he, it doesn't really necessarily need to run around the stadium. To it did. Us. It did. It was okay. That there was no, And the people were happy that he did that. Is there anything wrong with that? I'm asking you. You should be able to tell us. <laughs> no, I, no he did. As I told you, I'm 63 <laughs> years old. Because I cannot do that, I told him, we, the older ones, we walk. But we walk around. <laughs> the job of Nigeria uh, president mm -hmm. goes beyond running to the stadium. I agree. But what, what do you want? Anything that you want of a president in Nigeria, Amechi has it. Amechi was a speaker for eight years in Rivers. He was a governor for eight years, now minister for, for four years. What else? He has a master's, uh, he has a degree in, in, in English. He's doing his uh, degree in law now. He has traveled. I know every state that we go, we went uh, for this, especially the six states that we have visited. Amechi has somebody in there that will stick his neck for him. Mm. We'll leave it at that, uh, Senator Alim Dume, until sometimes I will have more time to talk about this. We need to talk about being wasted now because people are already agitated in that state. But I must really thank you. You always stand for what you believe in. Well, that's <laughs> it. Um, and, and this is part of it. And, 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 I, and I want you to know, I'm not just talking about myself. But as you can see, I will tell Nigerians more why we need somebody like Amichi to be our president, honestly. Honestly, I would have, I would love to be a Nigerian president. No, first of all, talk, you have to talk about why you need to get your party's ticket. But why, I mean, the, another conversation will be whether or not your, the Nigerian people will accept your party once we get in the 2023. Well, once we get the ticket, I strongly believe we're on our way to winning the presidency because what Amechi has done and how he has related to Nigerians and how uh, acceptable he will be or he is, to Nigerians. He's, as I said, I will repeat that he is the only candidate now, for now, because no candidates are declaring. He's the only true Nigerian candidate that is going in for that election as a Nigerian. All right. Senator Alain Dume, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Mm -hmm.